Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to TV and film with a shot at the egg custard tart, dan ta or pastille de nata from Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> Okay, so those following along with this series may know that although this is the first dish that we have done from the Avatar animated series, we have now done a couple of dishes from the Avatar universe. Some time ago we did the Zhongzi sticky rice dumplings as well as the sweet custard buns from Legend of Korra, and what I have always found interesting about diving into the food from this series is that pretty much all of the food that you come across in this show is specifically cuisine that can travel easily, since the whole premise of both shows is that they're traveling across four nations on top of a flying sky bison for pretty much the entire show. So, we come across a lot of things like buns, boughs, bamboo leaf wraps, and of course, egg custard tarts, which is neat. For those unfamiliar, an egg custard is a pastry of Cantonese origin which, as you may have guessed, has significant influence from European baking in its use of a laminated butter pastry dough filled with a custard made from egg and sweetened condensed milk. While the Cantonese dan tat or dan ta in Mandarin would be what you would more commonly come across in Hong Kong and makes use of a drier, more pie crust like dough, today we're going to be making a flakier, more pastry like tart of Portuguese origin known as the pastille de nata. This, of course, means that for our dough, we're going to be diving into how to make, you guessed it, Puff pastry, which though this is not our first attempt making puff pastry, it will certainly serve as a reminder that, well, you can buy this stuff at the grocery store and save yourself 45 minutes of rolling. But alas, we are hosting a cooking YouTube channel, so here we are. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so diving right in, we're kicking things off here first with our pastry dough, which is going to be a pretty simple combination of flour and cold water. Cold being the key here, as with any time that you're working with butter, remember that the heat coming off of your hands will perpetually be working against you as that butter melts. So we're going to do everything in our power to keep this dough as cold as possible today. This is 150 grams of AP flour, 2 grams of kosher salt, and 80 milligrams of water going in, which I'm mixing with a pair of chopsticks until a shaggy dough forms, then switching to my hands to knead until a cohesive dough ball forms. Then next, I'm liberally flouring my work surface, then adding my dough to the cutting board and forming it into a rough rectangle shape before rolling it out about 14 inches in diameter, rotating a quarter turn after each roll. Moving on, I've got a single stick of room temperature butter here so that we may spread it into an even layer onto a third of our dough before folding it over like a pamphlet, then repeating with the remaining third. Then once we've got our uh, butter pamphlet here, I'm rotating, rolling it out again, and repeating until all of my butter is incorporated. I think this took me something like four or five layers of dough altogether, which was, yeah it took a while. So, I'd like to take this lengthy time lapse here as an opportunity to mention a couple of different shortcut options. The first is that you can absolutely buy laminated butter sheets at the store, which if you did have your heart set on making this dough from scratch, will at least save you the time of spreading out this butter over and over again. Or alternatively, I'd like to once again mention that store-bought puff pastry does exist and pretty much turns this whole recipe into something like a 25 minute endeavor. No, of course it won't be quite as good and it won't have quite the same number of flaky layers, but as always, I'm a big proponent of shortcuts that will make it much more likely that other people will actually attempt this recipe. So, in any case, once all of our butter is incorporated, I'm rolling our dough sheet up horizontally into a coil so that we have now created literal coils of butter. Ooh. Then next, I'm wrapping this in plastic wrap and putting it in the fridge for a minimum of 30 minutes so that our butter can re-solidify. 
Meanwhile, while our dough is cooling down, I'm cleaning up our work surface and diving into our custard filling next. This is two eggs that I'm whisking to combine before adding 85 milliliters of sweetened condensed milk, a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract, and 180 milliliters of cold water. We're transferring this all to a pour-friendly container, then circling back to our pastry dough here, which, if you've done this correctly, should be pretty much solid and rigid at this point. I'm cutting this in half first because I don't like using the uneven ends of our pastry dough, then slicing off a piece about one inch thick, revealing our beautifully coiled and layered butter inside. Next, I'm liberally oiling the inside of my cupcake pan, then again working quickly here because that butter is rapidly melting from the heat from our hands. I'm pressing this into the center of our cup and pushing downward until the dough fully covers the cup. As we work, we want the direction of our fingers to be working downward as much as possible, not outward. Remember that we've got layers of butter coiled into the dough facing upward here, which means that the more that we push outward, the more that we're going to smash those layers together and ruin our flaky crust, which is no good. Once our pan is fully lined with our tarts, I'm filling them at about three quarters full with our custard. Remember to leave a little bit of headroom because the egg in our custard is going to cause that filling to expand in the oven. I'm adding these to a rimmed baking sheet, then putting in a 500 degree F oven for 12 to 15 minutes until golden brown. Finally, as a fun optional bonus for a crispy top to our custard tarts, I'm sprinkling a pinch of demerara sugar on top, then using a torch to brulee the tops, and we're ready to eat. Okay, so I'll start off here by mentioning that this might be one of my favorite pastries of all time, and I honestly would eat pretty much all of these regardless of how they turned out. I mean, what's not to love here? It's sugar, butter, and eggs. That said, I do think that the egg tarts that we've come up with here are one of my personal favorites, mostly because I intentionally biased our filling to have a little bit less sugar in it than a more traditional egg tart would. In my opinion, the lighter sugar content allows for the custard to be a little less overwhelmingly sweet and lets the richness from the butter come through a little bit more, which I love. Then our persistence in laminating our butter into our dough has really paid off in all of these wonderfully flaky layers that basically break apart in our hands, which is amazing. Now, I said this earlier, and I'll reiterate, puff pastry sheets are readily available in pretty much any grocery store frozen food aisle, the same place that you would find pre-made pie shells. I have made these using puff pastry, and the results are not quite the same. You won't see the same kind of separation of flakes and layers as we have here, and I think just generally won't turn out quite as delicate as our hand-rolled pastry sheets did here. That said though, it will still be an egg tart and will save nearly an hour of your day, so if you're say making these for a crowd or you just don't feel like rolling pastry dough today, I will stand by this shortcut as an absolutely viable option. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series dedicated to foods from TV and film, so definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Can Cook Fried Rice pop-up is now at Wondrous Brewing every Thursday through Sunday, so come by and say hi then if you can. More about that at wucancook.com slash eats. Also, in case you missed it, we've got t-shirts. I'm super excited to be partnering with my good friends at Polywog Prints to make these super sweet Wu Can Cook shirts. They're super soft and comfortable and also have a picture of me on the back, which is crazy. We're selling these at the Wu Can Cook pop-up or you can head over to wucancook.com slash shop to grab one from the online store too. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice interneters, and I'll see you soon.